Welcome to another video for chemistry. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be continuing on our last video from molar mass conversion questions. But we're going to broaden our scope in this video, and we're going to discuss molecular mass. Okay, And how that differs from the previous is that in the previous video, we were uh, comparing the, uh, the mass per element, the molar mass per element. In this one, we're going to be looking at the molar mass of a molecule. Okay. So here's the first of three problems that we're going to discuss in this video. So calculate the molecular mass of the following compounds. So first we're going to look for the molecular mass of sulfur dioxide, which is a gas responsible for acid rain, and then caffeine, a much larger molecule, a stimulant that is present in tea, coffee, and cola beverages. All right, so here's our strategy for finding the uh, molar mass of sulfur dioxide. So how do atomic masses of different elements combine to give the molecular mass of a compound? So the key idea of this is the combined mass of, or the, the combined mass of each element present in this molecule, okay? So for a sulfur dioxide, I have a sulfur, and then I have two oxides, two oxygens, okay? All right, so I want to look at the periodic table, and I can find the mass, the molar mass, of an individual sulfur atom, which is 32.06, and then the uh, individual molar mass of an oxygen atom is 16. And I have two of those, so I'm going to end up multiplying it by two, as you can see. So then what I'll do after that is I want to combine these masses, because I'm not just getting the molar mass of an individual atom, mind you, but I'm using that individual mass of the, of the atom to then find the combined mass of the molecule, okay, which is 64.06 grams per mole. So one mole of sulfur dioxide gas, okay, if I was to, if I was able to, to collect all of my sulfur dioxides that are in the air, um, one mole of those uh, of that molecule would be 64.06 grams per mole. okay? Now let's look at let's find the molar mass of a caffeine molecule. And as you can see, this caffeine molecule is considerably bigger. okay, but it's no problem. I'm going to find it the same way that I did sulfur dioxide. Okay, so what I've done here, as you can see, is I've, sp I've split up the individual uh, atoms, and I can see here that I have eight carbons, and each carbon is 12.01 grams, and I multiply that by eight because there's eight present in caffeine, and then I move over now to hydrogen, and hydrogen's molar mass is 1.008 grams, and I multiply that by 10 because there's 10 hydrogens present in caffeine, and then I do the same thing for nitrogen, which is you can see its mass there multiplied by four, and then I do the same thing with oxygen. And then once I find the molar mass of the combined elements in these in this molecule, I add them all together, okay, and I end up with a combined mass of 194.2 grams per mole. So if I were to grab 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, molecules of caffeine, it would come up to a mass of 194.2 grams per mole. Okay, so that's how I find the molar mass of these molecules. Let's move on to the second question here. Methane gas, CH4, is a principal component of natural gas. So the question here is how many moles of CH4, methane, are present in 6.07 grams of methane? All right, so my strategy here is to find my givens. Right? So my givens is 6.07 grams of methane. And I asked to, I'm asked to solve for moles. So I want to convert grams of methane into moles of methane. So I want to arrange the appropriate conversion factor so that the grams cancel and the unit moles are obtained in my answer. All right, so what am I talking about here? So just like in the previous video, I want to find the appropriate conversion factor. And here, I want to go from grams to moles. And since grams is the unit that I want to get rid of, I want that to cancel out eventually. I want that in a denominator position. Because mathematically, algebraically, uh, the number in a denominator position will be the one that will cancel out with my given. Okay? So I want to find the molar mass of methane, right? Just like before, um, I, want to, I want to kind of split each element apart and uh, multiply it by however many um, are in that molecule. So carbon is only one carbon, so I only need to worry about 12.01 grams. Hydrogen is 1.008 grams, but again, there's four of them, so I need to multiply that number by four and then add it to my carbon mass, and that'll give me 16.04 grams per mole. All right, 
So then I use that that mass, and I know that that mass is the exact mass for one mole of uh, methane. And actually, I should have methane um, written out right next to that mole. So it's this is one mole of methane. So what will end up happening is that those units will cancel, and I will end up with my desired unit, which is in moles. Okay, and I do my math, and I end up with 0.378 moles of methane. So how many moles are there in 6.07 grams of methane? 0.378 moles. Okay. All right, the final question. This one's a little bit more tricky, a little bit more involved, which is why I put it on here. How many hydrogen atoms are present in 25.6 grams of urea, NH2? And there's two of those NH2s, okay? There's a polyatomic ion, which uh, you know because it's indicated by the parentheses. So NH2 is in parentheses, and then outside of that is another subtext 2, which indicates that there's two of those. And then there's one carbon uh, monoxide. Okay, so that's urea, which is used as a fertilizer, urea, in animal feed and in manufacture of poly uh, and the manufacture of polymers. So the molar mass of urea. So this problem was nice because it already gave us the molar mass of urea. Otherwise, I would have had to find uh, the individual uh, masses of elements and how many are in this molecule and then found the mass that way. Some of these problems you're going to find that already do give you that molar mass. Okay? Some of you may have to find it yourself. This one, like I mentioned before, was nice in giving us that molar mass. So two givens. Number one, I'm being given, I'm being told that I have 25.6 grams of urea, and then I'm also being given the molar mass of urea. Okay? This is going to be helpful. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find hydrogen atoms. So how many hydrogen atoms are in 25.6 grams of urea? Now, th this is going to be fairly involved because it's not asking how many atoms of urea there are in 25.6 grams, but how many hydrogen atoms there are. Okay? So we need to find the appropriate conversion factors, and here's where the rubber meets the road for, uh, for us. So I want to write out my given, which was 25.6 grams of urea, right? Now, this is going to require some good logical problem-solving skills, detective work, and figuring out which is the most appropriate um, conversion factor to use. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of my grams of urea, okay? And I always want to try to go into moles. It's a lot easier working with moles. And the easiest way to convert grams of urea to moles of urea is by using my molar uh, mass of urea, which is given to me in my problem, okay? So I know that the molar mass of urea is 60.06 uh, grams, and that gives me a mole, right? But again, look at my question. What am I looking for? I'm looking for hydrogen atoms. I don't want moles of urea. So that means I need to find another conversion factor. So the conversion factor changing mole of urea to mole of hydrogen. Okay, so I'm shifting my, I'm shifting my focus now from moles of urea and I'm narrowing it down to moles of hydrogen because my question is asking for atoms of hydrogen. So when I find the moles of hydrogen, that's going to draw me one step closer to finding my moles of hydrogen. So how do we do this? All right, so uh, looking at urea, this is I'm, I'm going to find all the different um, mole ratios that I have for urea. So nitrogen, I have two nitrogens present in this molecule, okay, or four, two moles, and I have four moles of hydrogen present, okay? I have one of carbon, and then I have two of oxygen. All right, but the question is asking for hydrogen, so that's the one I want to pinpoint. Okay, so for one per one mole of urea, I have four moles of hydrogen. Okay, so for every one atom or mole, or I'm sorry, not atom, but for every one molecule of uh, urea, I have four atoms of hydrogen, and that's the ratio that I want to work with. That's my key ratio. It's a four. It's a one to four ratio. A multiple. A multiple ratio. Now that's the ratio that's going to help me move on from the broad idea of the molecule urea to narrowing it down to hydrogen, right? So one mole of urea gives me four moles of hydrogen. There's that one to four ratio, okay? Now, now, here's the thing though. Now I have moles of hydrogen, but that's not what I want. I want atoms of hydrogen. 
So then my next ratio, I want to get rid of the unit of moles, right? In particular, the moles of hydrogen. So my next ratio, here, let me back up a little bit. My next ratio will be one mole of hydrogen. And guess what? From there, I can actually get the atoms of hydrogen because I know in one mole of anything, how many, how many atoms am I going to find? That's right, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power hydrogen atoms. And look, there's that unit that I'm looking for, atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so I will, this, this combination of conversion factors gets me to where I want to go. Or if, if you refer back to the analogy I used in the previous video, these different transfer tickets, if you will, are the ones I need to get from point A to point B. Okay, so my route to point A and B is, was a little bit more complicated than in other problems, so I needed more than one transfer or more than one conversion factors. So you'll notice here I got rid of my grams. Okay, this, this particular conversion factor helped me move on from grams to moles of urea. And then my next conversion factor helped me move on from moles of urea to moles of hydrogen. And then from moles of hydrogen to atoms of hydrogen. And then I do my math which is basically 25.6 divided by 60.06 .06 times 4 times Avogadro's number gets me 1.03 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. So how many atoms of hydrogen are there in 25.6 grams of urea? There we go. I have my answer. Okay. Feel free to go back and rewind, rewatch this uh, portion. I do find that this a problem like this do, does tend to be a little bit more challenging. So go back and review it, okay, if you had any issues with it. And that does it for this video for molecular mass conversion questions, okay? Good luck in your studying.